Hello all. In today's lecture, we are going to learn about the valuation of bonds and debentures when the interest is paid semi-annually. In the last lecture, as we have already discussed that the corporate issues debentures and whereas the government and quasi-government agencies mainly issues bonds. In the previous lecture, we also learned that the bonds and the debentures carries the fixed rate of interest and that fixed rate of interest is also known as coupon rate and the fixed rate of interest is calculated whatever the coupon rate is given you have to multiply it with the face value and you are going to get the fixed rate of interest now in this lecture we are going to discuss when the interest is paid semi-annually that means the interest is paid twice a year after every six months the interest is paid to the debenture holders and bond holders so in the last lecture we learned that if we are making this number line and our time period is known because in the case of debentures and your bonds your maturity period is there so my time period is known in the last lecture we have learned that every at the end of every year we are going to pay interest till the end period and on the nth period we are also going to company is also going to pay the maturity value to the bond holders and debenture holders. Now, when the interest is paid twice a year, so which means over here, that means after every six months, the first interest will pay it at the end of first six months, second interest will pay it at the end of one year, third interest will pay it at the end of one and a half year, fourth interest at the end of second year, fifth interest at the end of second uh, second and a half year and then at the end of third year you are going to get the sixth interest and the process goes on and on now what we are doing in the year one we are getting interest two times so now whatever interest you are going to get at the end of one year we are not going to get that interest we are going to get half of that that means half of that amount we are going to get after six months and the remaining half we are going to get at the end of one year for example if the interest rate is let's say your coupon rate is 10 percent and the face value of the bond is rupees thousand so if the coupon rate is 10 percent you are going to receive rupees 100 as an interest every year but in case of semi-annually 50 rupees you will receive at the end of sixth month and remaining 50 rupees you will receive at the end of one year and again 50 rupees at the end of one and a half year and remaining 50 rupees at the end of second year and the process goes on and on now what the thing over here is that we are not getting complete interest at the end of one year but we are getting 50 percent of that interest at the end of one year and 50 percent of that interest at the end of first six months so if we talk about the uh, present value of the bond whenever we have to calculate the present value of bond whatever interest we are going to receive at the end of one year we are going to divide that interest by two that means now in the first installment that is will be after the end of first six months we are going to get half of that interest so that's why what i have done i have divided the interest by two and since the interest is divided by 2, now I am getting my first installment at the end of 6 months. So whatever rate of interest will be there for per annum, we have to calculate the rate of interest for 6 months. So in that case, we also have to divide R by 2. And since the R is also divided by 2, now in case of 1 year, we are going to get 2 installments. So if the bond is for let's say 10 years, now you are going to get 20 installment in 10 years. So what we have done, I have multiplied and by 2. So whatever for whatever years the bonds or debentures are issued, now you are going to get double the installment. So you can say double the time interest will be paid to you. So whenever the semi-annual question will be there, so you have to multiply n by 2. You have to divide interest by 2 and market rate of return by 2. So over here your PVP will be your present value of bond. I will be the interest rate per annum. R will be the rate of return or cost of the bond. That is your per annum. So over here we will divide it by 2 and calculate for semi-annually. 
n will be your number of years to maturity and mv will be your maturity value so as we have already discussed in case of debentures it will be i but now if the interest is paid semi annually we have to divide i by 2 similarly instead of r i have taken kd so we will divide kd by 2 and n will be multiplied by 2 and for the shortcut method we have also learned that we will be using the formula for present value of ordinary annuity over here and present value formula will be used over here so it will be your present value formula and over here it will be present value of annuity and annuity will be your ordinary annuity so let's understand with the help of an example now over here it says let's abc limited issues five year bonds now you can say it's a five year bond maturity period is at the end of five years face value is rupees thousand and annual annual coupon rate is 12 percent that means in one year you are going to get 12 percent rate of interest and it is payable half yearly and the market rate of return or you can say required rate of return is 14 percent now if you are going to calculate 12 percent of 1000 it will be your 120 rupees now since the amount is paid half yearly so on the first six months you will get only 60 rupees so over here it's a five year bond my n will be 10 years so that means i am going to get 60 rupees in 10 installment so over here one period that means from 0 to 1 it will represent six months so one represent end of first six months two will represent end of second six months three will represent end of third six months and four will represent end of four six months and so on so at the end of 10th six month which will be your fifth year you are going to get rupees 60 plus rupees 1000 for the maturity value now let's solve it first of all with the long method now if you are going to solve it with the long method since the number over here we are don't have to write years i have written end of the period and one period is for every six months so one will represent end of first six months two will represent end of second six months and so on five years is there so 10 periods will be there and cash flows we have already discussed cash flow will be 60 till 9 years and 1060 for the 10th year because over here we are getting rupees 60 as an interest plus 1000 as a maturity value now present value factor we have to calculate for market rate of return market rate of return is given to be 14 percent since the over here the time period is for six months and 14 percent is given to be per annum so what we have done we have divided by two to calculate the rate of return for six months so it will be seven percent so now we have to calculate the present value factor now if we are going to calculate the present value factor we are going to get this let's see how we are going to get these amount now with the help of calculator since it's seven percent we have also already learned that for calculating the present value factor we have to divide 100 by 107 so if you are going to divide it your first amount will be 0 0.934 second amount will be for that you have to first multiply multiply you have to first press multiply sign and then equals to second will be 873 now you don't have to press multiply again you just have to press equals to so next is 816 again equals to 0 0.762 again equals to it will be 0 0.712 again it will be 0 0.666 then again equals to 0 0.622 then you are going to get 0 0.582 0 0.543 and 0 0.508 now we have now what we have to do we have to multiply your cash flow 60 rupees by present value factor 0 0.934 to get the net present value so if you are going to do this we are going to get this amount so multiply all the cash flows with the present value factor you are going to get this now what you have to do you have to add all these terms so you will be getting your amount so value of the bond will be 929.08 now let's see by shortcut method now in the shortcut method we can use the formula of ordinary annuity because this is coming to be ordinary annuity and over here we will be using present value formula so the present value formula for ordinary annuity is interest paid 1 minus 1 upon kd raised to power n upon kd rv upon 1 kd raised to power n 
over here interest paid we will be taking 60 rupees and kd we are going to take 7 percent because 14 percent is our rate of return per annum so for six months it will be seven percent and n will be your 10 so if you are going to do it we are going to get this amount now let's see how to solve it now first of all let's take the present value factor so over here we can also write instead of thousand upon 107 we can also write it like this it can be your thousand multiply by we can convert this into like this it will be 100 divided by 107 and you can multiply it by or you can read to raise to power 10. Now let's see how to solve it. Now first of all let's see how we are going to get the present value factor of this. So it will be your 100 divided by 107. You are going to get 0 0.934. Now we have to press multiply and since the power is 10 as we have already learned whatever the power is you have to subtract one from that and you have to press equals to that number of times so your 10 minus 1 will be 9 so we have to press equals to 9 times so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so your present value factor for the 10th year will be 0 0.508 so over here we are going to write 1000 multiply by 0 0.508 now if you are going to solve this term also it will be 100 upon 107. So what we have done we have already calculated this. Now we are going to subtract minus 1 from this. We are going to get 0 0.491. We have to ignore the minus sign divided by 0 0.07. You are going to get this amount. You have to multiply by 60. Now this is your present value factor of annuity. This is also known as present value factor of annuity. So let's see if this is my present value factor of annuity that we have learned and this was my present value factor. Now if you are going to solve it, we are going to get 0 0.929.7. So this was the method by shortcut method to get the answer and previously we have learned about the long method. We have already discussed these points. If the coupon rate is greater than rate of return, value of bond or debentures will be more than face value. And if the coupon rate is less than rate of return, value of the bond and debenture will be less than the face value. In this example, we have learned that coupon rate was less and your rate of return was more. Rate of return was 14%, coupon rate was 12%. So coupon rate was less than your rate of return and hence you got the value which is less than the face value of rupees 1000. And if the coupon rate is equals to rate of return then the value of bond and debenture will be same as your face value. Hope you have understood the concept. For further reference you can refer the book financial management. Thank you.